So it's interesting, you guys kind of oriented yourself towards the center. That might actually work good. Let's try it. Uh, I'll be your approximate target. Um, so, uh, follow up from last week. The most important word is? Stop. And what we'll, what we'll hopefully be, do, be figuring out by the end of today is the most important word is actually stop and stop, uh, depending on what kind of progress we make today. So last week we started with step one, which was just kind of your, your prep. So uh, let's all just kind of say, I'm about ready to cast, kind of show me your grip, show me your body, body language, if I'm the target. Great. Um, one thing I did not do last week, and I should have introduced it, is uh, I'm going to grab TJ's rod just for one second. When we talked about posture, you guys are fine. You're showing me the right grip. Again, it's kind of just forming a line, coming right up to your thumb on your arm. But what I did not show you is you're going to want to get in the habit. Take the line under your index finger. And honestly, until we get a couple steps later, that's just where it's going to stay. And we'll talk more about why that is. We, I mean, the concept is line control, but you're going to want to uh, at all times have contact with that line, either with this hand or with this hand. And we're going to introduce this hand later. So part of the setup, try and get in the habit of keeping that uh, line under the index finger between that and the cork. So the second thing we did last week was a pickup and delivery. And a couple of the, the things we talked about there is where you start from. Uh, you guys are great. And, and again, the idea is we need the resistance of the line being, in this case, on the grass. It's actually a lot easier when it's on the water. Um, but you're going to start the process, you know, with your rod a foot-ish, 18 inches is fine, but you're going to start low. And the other thing is, as we do this, you also want to end low, right? Uh, and again, the proof's going to be in the pudding. How will you know if the cast went well amongst all things is it's going to look a lot like V-Bulls look right now, very, very straight. Oh, you cheated on me, huh? <laughs> the, uh, so as we do this, again, those are the first two steps. You guys, all four of you did really well last week. The, the one thing, and it's, it's exactly expected, that we need to work on a little bit more. And what we'll do is we're going we're gonna to do a little bit of last week to pick up and deliver. And then in a few minutes, we're going to introduce some false casting. So on the pick up and deliver, the, the key thing we were kind of seeing last week is that stop has to be very crisp. It's got to be in that, I'll say, one, one o'clock window. And when, when we talk about the stop, it's got to be tangible. But the other thing is, it's not whether your arm stops. It's whether your rod stops. And there's a big gap between your rod and your arm, and that's your wrist. And I think I mentioned this last time, but I'm going to borrow TJ's rod just for another second. And guys, bear in mind that a little bit of wrist flex can really make the rod travel. If I stop with a, with a, stu a sturdy wrist right at 1 o'clock, well, my arm's at 1. Because there's a little bit of a curvature in your wrist, you know, your, the rod's at 1. But look at this, without moving my arm, if my wrist flexes even that much, guys, my thumb traveled less than two inches, my rod's traveling six feet. So when you get the stop, remember, your arm stopping is a good part of the battle, but really, it's, did the rod stop? And if it's not stopping, it's because we either need to work on your patience or it's because your wrist is flexing. You guys are doing pretty darn good on that. So um, I want you to go ahead and just do some pick up and deliver. And again, I want to start low, end low, and I want to stop at midnight, stop at one. Okay, I like what I'm seeing there. Um, you're doing fine, although we've got you in a bad spot there, TJ. So, Danny, are you stopping? That was better. Vebel, are you stopping? Is there a spot where you can tangibly... There you go. I'm using the uh, watch. I wondered. I actually brought a, a wristband that I may stick on one of you guys if you need it. Uh, tell, Danny, tell them what, what you're doing and why. So, Danny said he's using his watch. How are you using your watch? So, 
again, a lot of times you're going to find, like I said, that your arm is stopping very rigidly, but your wrist is going sloppy on you. A really neat trick, if you've got a long sleeve shirt, tuck the butt of the rod under the long sleeve of your shirt. The other thing you can do is a watch, and as I, as I said, I literally brought this in case when you guys need it. But don't be afraid to do that, because over time, you'll get used to it feeling that way, and you'll just do it. But it's a really nice trick if you find yourself flexing your wrist. And usually that's the culprit. But the other thing is stop, deliver. Slow her down, Danny. Slow her down, stop. In fact, what I would say, Danny, is in your mind, stop and wait. I'd actually, in your mind, not just say stop, I'd say stop and wait, go. One Mississippi. One. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good. And Vibo, you were hurrying a little bit. That's better. A little, even a little more hesitation on the back. Yeah. And the other thing I would say, Vibo, relax. You're in what, what I mean by this is you're, you're actually, it's like your body doesn't trust that the line's going to go far enough. It's okay. You're just going to get tired. It's not going to hurt your cast any. It's just going to wear you out. See? There you go. And so the other thing, Vibo, why don't you reel in a little bit of line? You do have a lot of line there you're working with, and that might be a little much for right now. Um, so what I want to do then is we're going to stop this for a second, and we're going to try and really focus on getting you guys to really get good hard stops, but also stopping is a big, big portion of it. But when do you come forward is the next question. And if you're early, you're going to lose all your power and you're going to find you're doing, you know, you're trying to muscle it. If you're late, you're going to muscle it. So I'm going to try and show you what early and late look like. And then I'll try and show you what, uh, what it looks like and you time it well. Maybe I can use yours this time, Danny. And um, what I want you guys to watch is what my line is doing when it's behind me. In other words, I, yeah, you're probably, you know, it's like watching tennis, you're probably going to be going like this. That's okay. But what I'm trying to emphasize here is as the line is traveling behind me, if I get a good crisp stop, when I was saying to Danny that you almost need to think stop and wait, not just stop, is I need to stop for a period of time. And that period of time is my line is now going out behind me. There's a beautiful spot where you want to come forward. If you're too early, what the line is going to be doing is it's still going to be in the process of going backwards. In other words, the line is going to look like this. If you're too late, the line has already completely rolled out, unfurled, and it's dropping and maybe even the end of it's touching the ground. That's too late. This is too early. What you really want to do is as that line is laying out, it's going to be right about here. It's going to be almost parallel to the ground. And again, the last thing that'll be getting out there is actually that, that leader and your fly in the end. This is your leader and fly. The line is just about laid out. The leader's starting to lay out. When you're right about here is when you want to come forward. In time, you will be able to feel that. In time, there'll be enough of a, when that, rod, when that line lays out, it's actually going to tug on your rod a little bit. And you'll, that'll kind of be your hint. Hey, even if you're not looking back, it's time to come forward. Because I always say, when you feel a tug, it's time to tug. When you feel a tug, it's time to tug. But the main thing is for now, you probably aren't going to feel it yet. So your eyes are going to have to help you. So what I want to do now, again, I'll show you what too early looks like, what too late looks like. I'm going to give him back his rod. And for the next couple minutes, what I want you guys to do is your entire universe is from midnight and back. And by this, guys, I'm not exaggerating. What I want you to do is I just want you doing this. I don't want you following it and going, okay, what's happening here? I don't want your, I don't want your head to turn. Stop and notice the timing. I wait until it's almost straight and I'm coming forward. Almost straight, coming forward. Now this, that was too early. Could you guys, it's hard to do it slow, but did you see what I was doing there? The line was, you know, half the line was still going that way, half was going that way. So again, too early. The line hasn't laid out yet. Too late. 
And by the way, one thing to, to be thinking about, too late is a little more forgiving than too early. Uh, you'll still often get a fair amount of power in your cast. And to, it, it takes more discipline to be late than early. So I'd also say if you find yourself being a little late, I'd actually say it's a good thing. It's easier to come back from. And if you're a little bit late, you're still going to get a decent cast out of it. If you're early, you're probably going to get a poor cast and you're going to work your tail off for it. So again, what we're looking for here, hopefully you guys can see that, is I stop. And this is what I want you guys doing. I'm not even looking forward. Right now, it's just about, you see the line's straight, the, the, the leader's just about coming. Too early would be here. You know, the line's not even close to splaying out too late would be, I'm kind of letting it die. So, for, like I said, for this one, I'm going to give you your, your rod back, Danny. What I want you guys to try and do, and I am serious, I don't want you to even, your entire world is midnight and back. Your jaw doesn't move. You guys notice I'm not looking. And by the way, I can kind of tell by what's going on back here and how it's feeling if I got a decent cast or not. That was probably halfway decent. Most of them were decent. Gosh, on Saturday when my wife and I were doing the, helping that group out, I ended up having to do a casting demo where I had to show them bad casts. You guys don't know how hard it is when you've, you spend all this time trying to do a good cast of say, let me show you some really bad loops. Let me, oh gosh, it was, it was awkward. But I got there. I just had to go back and, and remember. So at the end of your cast, you're facing forward, TJ. <laughs> and if you had, you're not hitting it, but let me ask you this. I was just going to say, if you, were to, if you were to guess what was going on there, what would your thought have been? Uh, probably the rip. Um, wasn't seeing that. Your rod tip is actually stopping good. Um, I think the problem we had there is you're, you're stopping at almost 11 or midnight. You actually want it a little further back. A little early, but you are stopping. You're stopping good, right. but your line isn't laying out behind you. And I don't think it's because you're flexing your wrist or anything. I think we're just stopping a little early and there's not enough inertia. Yeah. Try to travel so your rod tip stops at about one. That's better. And that was 11 again. I don't know if you noticed that. That's one. I got an idea. Do you mind if I put a hand on you? Nope. So right now, even though your yep. body's turned, yep. your angle is still here. So you're almost still, you're almost defeating the purpose that we got you at a quarter of an angle. Okay. I'd like to see your casting stroke more in here. Okay. And the reason I say that is with your line laying out where I've got you going, yep. you're, I thought you can see that or come close to seeing it. And again, just yep. keep looking backwards. If we've got you where you're, even though your body's oh, turned, that you're, you're, you're more like this, then yeah, the line's going behind you. You're not going to see it. So okay. kind of, again, have the line coming up here. So if, if I'm standing yep. parallel to you, um, I probably want the line almost aimed at that tree trunk or, you know, a little bit this side of the tree trunk. And where you're doing is you're swinging it way back here. And it's just the angle. I just say that strictly because you can see it better. It was very good. I was gonna, I was gonna give you a hard time because you're looking forward at the end of your cast. You shouldn't be looking this way. I, I want to see the result. But you'll know the result. You'll know the result. That's okay. That was low, Another thing I'm thinking, TJ, that I think will help you. Like I say, part of it's getting momentum to get the line out. I don't know. We might give you a little bit more line to work with. Actually, it might help. So I'm going to watch each of you guys, and then I'm going to ask you if there's something going wrong in the back, I'm going to ask you what you think it is. That's good. Go ahead, Greg. You're, oh, you guys are kind of fighting over space, aren't you? That's okay. I'm, I'm, 
I was watching him more than anything else. Okay, so I'll start with you, Greg. If you were to say it, it isn't feeling right or looking right, what, what are you seeing? Are you thinking you're stopping, or are you trigger early, trigger late? I, I think I'm too early. But okay. And if I'm too, if you're too early, the line's going to be overhead, kind of in this arc, and it's all, all going to be kind of still unfurling above you. Mm -hmm. But it's but it's starting to droop too. And if but I'm drooping, not... I'm probably late. Okay. Your stop's pretty darn good. Uh, you're waiting a little bit long and again think of that point where the line isn't quite straightened out It's almost straightened out try to come forward then but no you, you've got a nice actually your stop is very good And as I said, I'd rather have you a tad late than early because okay. again if you look look out in front of you yeah. That tells you the mechanics were pretty dang good So we're, we're kind of fine-tuning you were actually looking very good and Danny when he looks backwards does very well Maybe I have too much there's a fine line there. Um, I think, again, earlier I think, up. <laughs> I think TJ didn't have enough, and so it doesn't fly real good. You might be okay, and if it, that looked good, looked great on the end. At the end, it looks good, yeah. Which means the rest of it probably went pretty good. Go ahead and do a couple more. Now, oh, why, why don't you move? So guys, a, a quick time out, quick time out here. It'd be a good chance for you to rest your arms a second anyway. Um, the sun was bothering you guys, and if that's just because of where I'm standing, how about we figure out what works good for you and I'll move. I know that that means moving the camera, but I'm already making you move around anyway. Sorry about that, Rennie. Um, sun's that way. Well, if we're looking up overhead, looking up that way is bad. But yep. If, if we're not I'm thinking, why don't you guys form a line Maybe right about, yeah, well, what I'm thinking, if they do that, they're still going to be looking into the sun. I'm actually thinking of a line where you guys are here facing this way. Try that for a second, where you're just a little bit of room between you, but move forward so you get a little bit out of the trees. So why don't you go ahead and come forward, Veeble. And Danny, go ahead and come my way another four or five feet, just, just so you don't have to fight with those trees. You've got a corridor. You come forward, come my way a bit. And if we, Greg, can kind of slot you between these two guys, And TJ, I think you're in a good spot other than what I'd almost say is for you, you're, you're positioned well as far as not bumping into the trees, but you're kind of aiming here, which means your line's going that way. Kind of think of your target as, as the pavilion. Okay. So kind of, yeah, perfect. By the way, I like how you started to, to canter your body, so you were lining up good. So guys, forget the casts for a minute. Does that feel, okay? does this work okay where you feel like you can see? And you're not, yeah, because I apologize. Yeah, if you guys are looking up and all you're seeing is the sun, it's not, like for me, this is a terrible angle. But if I was casting. So go ahead again, do a couple pick up and delivers. Oh, so um, a couple things. It just, and again, it just occurred to me. So Greg's got some excess line out. Go ahead and get that up on the reel. Oh, okay. Because right now, and the reason it was is I hadn't emphasized this, but right now, the left hand, we're all, you're all righties, yep, the left hand could almost, could almost, I'm not saying put it in your pocket, it must be your pocket. Everything we're doing right now, and probably today, we're not going to even use the second hand. So just mentally, it's got to be here. So when I saw you with excess line with another hand involved, figure out what length you want, and then get that line back under your, your finger. Okay. So go ahead and just do a few. Hey Danny, don't try so hard on the frontwards cast. It's not hurting you any, you're adding power you don't even need. Your back cast looks good the front cast is going to be fine. I almost sense that you don't trust it, and so you're, it's, it's there. No, it's, it's there. You're, you are whipping. You don't need to, though. I mean, I can tell you're laying it out very nice now. You're stop, obviously, the wrist is a lot better. Yeah. Trust yourself that the line's going to lay out nice. 
You're, you're, you're putting muscle in you don't need to. It's, it's working. Okay. Just try to relax on that. Yeah, but, yeah see? See? You, you put in a lot less effort. Straight as an arrow. So, yeah, just trust yourself. Relax a little bit. Elbow. You think out or in? Because I, I feel a lot on my go, go ahead and Go ahead and do a couple casting motions yeah, for me. This. Yeah, we feel that. Okay. Well, do what you were, were doing. Now, you just changed on me. Go ahead and do what you were doing a minute ago. Okay, so good chance for you guys to take a break. Again, I don't want you casting your arms off. Uh, feedback, you are doing very well. Um, I think last week, the little bit of special time you and I took on your wrist, I think as long as we can keep the wrist cocked yeah, and, and you're patient, you're laying it out nice. And like I said, work on a little less power because you don't need it. Um, you guys are doing good. You got a crisp stop, a little late coming forward. And again, how do you know that? You said it a minute ago. It's, it's, I see the line coming and about here's where I come forward. I'd rather have you a little late than a little early because you're still, look at both of your lines, proofs in the pudding, you can get the power. Um, the reason why I take a break is Vibo uh, and Danny kind of brought up a good question. They said, you know, where's my elbow supposed to be? And there's, there's, there's practical answers to that. You guys can, you guys can see me okay, right? So, um, you know, one, one thing I see a lot of people do, especially beginners, I'm casting up here, okay? Um, why? I don't know, because it's unnatural to me, I don't know. But the, the biggest problem here, guys, is you're gonna get tired. Again, you can make wonderful casts up here, and, and in some, and by the way, you, you may find as, as you progress from trying to cast 20 feet to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, uh, trying to cast 70 feet. Um, at that point, yeah, you, you, your arm's going to be up because you're, you're going to find that the, forget your rod, the arc of your arm starts really getting exaggerated, you know, um, because you need the power. When we're doing shorter casts like this, you don't, you don't need this range of motion. This range is fine, so you don't really need the elbow up there. But like I said, if you want to do this, it's just going to tucker you out. You might have wonderful casts. So my advice is get it down. Uh, it should not. It should not be a problem. Where, where else? In, in Vibo, you know, was kind of casting, and he said, well, from one cast, he actually, like, almost planted it on his hip. You could also do that. What I, reason I wouldn't recommend that is pretty quick, you're going you're gonna to feel pinched. And you know what you're going to do to make up for it? You're going to use your wrist. I actually was training, you know, teaching somebody, and they, they said, well, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to keep my elbow down and put it on my hip. And I said, well, try it. And they said, hey, look how good I'm doing. And I said, yeah, that's because you're, you're doing this. So um, the other thing I would be, so that's so height-wise, bring it down. And, and by the way, the other reason I say bring it down, it should be relaxed. If you're up here, you know everything's tight. It should be relaxed. As far as in or out, a few inches out. Again, you need, because here's my, if, uh, if, if Rennie's my target, if Rennie's my target, I need just a little bit of clearance so my arm has clearance, right? Oh, look at that. But I don't want it out so far, and because if I've got it out here, my casting motion has changed from being in this plane. Again, I want my arm, the rod, the line. I'm going to be in this plane right here, right? So I'm just cantered off my shoulder a little bit. You guys see that? Everything is in this plane, but it's going frontwards, right? It's, it, everything is in one plane. Can you kind of see what I'm saying, TJ? If you look, rod, tip, arm, line, the line, everything's in one plane. If you get your arm out on the side, you're actually going to start going sidearm. And you rarely want to do that. But the only time you want to go sidearm is if you're trying to throw a curve cast like this, where I intentionally arc that line. And you know what? I'm about 50-50 on that, and that's a damn good curve cast. So uh, <laughs> glad. I hope you're recording. But uh, really, what you're going to want to do is be upright as much as practical. Again, it's, it's normal to cant it off your shoulder but you're gonna to wanna to be up here. So the further your elbow gets, if you think about it, you know, the further your elbow gets out, watch my, watch my upper arm, or my, my lower arm. Further my elbow gets out, what, I just naturally, I naturally put this out. So then I'm, I'm going sidearm. It just, it just makes it harder. I mean, because I was showing you an intentional curve cast, but a lot of times you're gonna find is if you go in sidearm, you're gonna be curve casting all over the place when you don't want to. It'll be a negative curve with the line's belly in this way, a positive curve that way. So. I would say, 
And by the way, I'm purposely being long-winded. I do not want you guys to wear out. One thing about us doing an hour-long session, if I have you guys casting for an hour about 40 minutes in, you're not gonna be any good anymore. You're just gonna be tired. So, so elbow, keep her down, keep it relaxed. Shouldn't need to be working too hard. And just keep everything in one plane. One plane. Okay. So we're gonna do just a couple more minutes of this. You guys are okay to look front and back, but I want you to be comfortable with what's going on behind you. And if you need extra time on that, like I said, don't worry about in front. You know, so the mechanics on that are a lot better, Veeble. The, that one, you were out a little bit. That one, you're in. Yeah. Let her stop. Let her stop. Better. Better. We've still got you too close to the darn trees, don't we? And by the way, Veeble, one of the things I like is I'm not seeing a whole lot of the, again, Danny, it was almost a trust thing. Yeah. You're kind of, I, I see you doing this. I see you consciously bringing the elbow down. You're relaxing a little bit. Good. A little hurried, not hurried, but the stop wasn't prominent on that one. Better. Okay, time to go to step three. I think all you guys are fine, and by the way, step three just builds on this, so we'll continue to practice that. What we've been doing so far is what we call pick up and deliver. And a very key point for you guys right now, and I really mean this, if this is all you can do, and you probably know this, if this is all you can do, you're fly fishing. And I mean that as in, you have the ability to take a fly off the water, put the fly back out there, you've got some distance, you're fishing. Right now, if you wanted to go fishing tonight, fly fishing, you can do it. And I think that's a key point. If you get no further, you guys are going to get a lot further. The next thing we want to do is introduce false casting. And uh, what false casting is, is kind of like the name implies. I'm not going to deliver the fly. I'm just going to kind of have it up in the air. So pick up and deliver, we would do, right, here's my pick up, my deliver. False casting, I'm gonna be doing some of this, okay? Same motion, but here, now I got, and this is why we purposely let you guys do some pick up and deliver first. I got two stops I gotta worry about now, don't I? I gotta stop in the front, let it lay out and come back, stop in the back, let it lay out and come front. So What's that's what- the purpose of doing it? And why would I do this? The main reason is my fly is in a spot that I no longer want it. If I'm fishing on a pond or still water, it could be that, you know, I don't see anything going on, so I'm just gonna fish that, I'm gonna fish by that grill there, because I know fish like structure, there's gonna be a fish under there. So I'm casting over there, all of a sudden, over by Rennie, or let's just say by Vibo, I see a big fish and he's, he's eating. Well, I want that fly there and I want it right now. Because our power, and I was kind of mentioning this earlier, our power is in a certain plane. If I bring a false cast, like a pick up and deliver, if I pick up here, all my momentum is in this plane. If I try to pick up here and deliver 90 degrees off, I got nothing. I mean, literally, the, the line's gonna end up on me, behind me, or, or right here. So what I need to do is, is piecemeal it, right? That is the main reason. That is 99% of the time if you're false casting, it's for that and that only. The other thing you will do, guys, is we'll talk a little bit more on theory in the future, but in very broad sense, there's dry flies and wet flies. Wet flies are meant to be fished underwater. Dry flies are meant to be riding high on the surface or in the surface film. So just think of, they may be under the water, but they're right there. When you're fishing dry flies, over time, they do get waterlogged, they get saturated. So sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll be happy what I'm doing, but I'll do, and I'll even, and I don't recommend do this, I'll even do it like this on purpose. I'm drying my fly out. Then I'll settle down and deliver. So occasionally it's to dry out a fly. But more than anything, I want I just saw a fish where Vibo was, and like I said, if we do a pickup and deliver, 
better than I thought it would be actually. What you want to be able to do then is say, okay, I know I can't get it over to him now. So four false casts, we got Veeble. The other thing I would say is this is the part of the sport that everybody's seen. You know, there's this really cool movie called River Runs Through It. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. But there's some casting in that movie, false casting, that is just elegant. I, I don't care what you say. It's just you're thinking, oh, I don't even care about fishing. I just want to do this. A couple thoughts. And, and um, Danny's not doing anything wrong. It's just where he's at. But Danny's probably living this. The more time the line's up here, every time I do this, I've increased the likelihood of something going wrong. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up with a bad cast. I'm going to end up hung up. So number one, false casting. The more of them you do, if you don't need to, you've just increased the likelihood of something going wrong. Secondly, the more of this you're doing, guys, you're going to get tired. Do it when you need to. If you don't need to, don't. Lastly, and I think most importantly, ain't no fish up there. The fish are down here. And so I guarantee you, if you want to false cast all day, I'm pretty confident you're not going to catch any fish. Keep the line in the water. So what I want you guys to do is, and by the way, in, in some ways, I think this will help you get more comfortable with what's going on. Because right now, by just doing a one and done, you've really got one opportunity for that line, for the rod to stop and for the line to lay out. What you can do now is, is, is again, you'll have multiple chances of looking at that behind you. I can do this because, and I'm just going to, you know, I'll do four or five of these and then I'll deliver very poorly in this case. So do a pickup, whatever you're comfortable with. I'd say not less than two false casts, maybe not more than five, but that's just a general rule of thumb because I, if you do this for all, like I said, you do this, you can get tired really fast. If you only do one or two, you won't get the feel of it. So try to think between two and five, but whatever you're comfortable with, pick up, false cast, false cast, deliver. Uh, good rule of thumb, 10 and 2. So good rule, again, good rule of thumb, 10 and 2 for your false casting, my rod tip. And then, of course, the deliver. But remember, stop and stop. Stop and stop. Stop and catch Danny and deliver. I got you, Danny. Connected. You are connected. I don't think badly. Hopefully not. Okay. So, an interesting observation. The two guys on my left, which be the right, doing the false casting, you're actually being more patient on your back casts and letting it play out. And the, and the two guys on my right, you guys have used this as an opportunity to make sure that the line is in constant motion. You, you, you look like you're, 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 you're trying to rein in some cattle. And it's funny because it's just, it's just no. again, I mean, <laughs> it, but no, it's just, an, it's funny. It's just an observation. Like I said, for you guys, I could tell that that started making it actually a little more comfortable and you were improving. These guys decided, again, I don't know if it's a trust thing, trust yourself. That's what you were doing though, Danny. You literally, the line was in perpetual motion. Stop and stop. And, and like I said, think about, then I'm taking, <sighs> better, Vibo, that's it. Stop and stop. Stop, stop, deliver. Here I am thinking I can take Brad Pitt's response. <laughs> By the way, Brad Pitt does none of that casting. <laughs> the movie has Brad Pitt and his brother, and the same guy actually doubles for both of them. Really? This guy could cast, yeah. Huh. He actually looks more like the brother. I don't know how they made him look like Brad Pitt, but slow her down. So the backs were great, Danny. The backs were really good. Now let's start working on the 10 o'clock stop. Because you were almost doing a deliver every time. There. There. 
okay. No, that's all right. Th that's fine. Your false casts were great. It's fine. Don't worry about that. We're throwing a lot at you. Yep, slow her down. Slow. Whoop. Yeah. The, the fly ended up bumping in here. I felt the uh, extra. Yeah. Wait. What that's called is a tailing loop. And I will be, and I, I am serious. I, I, there's tailing loops and wide loops. If you got a tailing loop, that's a good spot to work from because it means you've got nice tight loops. Greg, you're looking really good. You really are. So, so TJ, slow her down and emphasize your stops. And I am serious, guys. In your in your mind, maybe, maybe if you want to start whispering, do it. Stop and wait. Stop and wait. Or at least or at least say stop. Stop. Make sure these happen. And like I said, guys, trust that when your cast is good, there, see, TJ, your line is laying out really nice in front of you on that one. So keep your arm down, keep your arms down, slow the pace down, just, just think, this is, this is easy, this is relaxing. See, Perry, it's a whole lot easier if you... That wasn't bad, Beeble, and I could see you were, you were almost exaggerating the, slow her down, Danny, slow her down, my friend, relax, slow her down. Hey, yes. And that was the one thing that I said that, I left some stuff and I don't have. Um, well, it will, except you're not going to completely know where your fly is going. Oh, but, but really, guys, I think we're okay for today because where your fly line's going is going to tell you the, the main thing. The only other thing I would say, TJ, on the, on the, the front, Try to try to get her to stop at ten. You're, you're you're stopping here, which is a natural thing to do. But because of that, then you're you're pulling a big sweep backward. Try to think of guys. Think of your arm as if it was what do you call that? A metronome. Ten, two. That's better, TJ. Yeah, that's better. Yep. And go go ahead and pull that elbow in a bit there, uh, Beeble. That's better. And go and Danny, go ahead and bring your arm down. You're you're working. Slower down, Danny. Slow, slow, slow. That's better. Yeah, that was good. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so you're you're trying to adjust a little something. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. In ten minutes. And I just want you to feel this, and we're going we're gonna to work on the same stuff next week. But the next step in our process is going to be what we, oh, you found it? Yep. Uh, is going to be what I call, we're going to deliver the fly to a target. So uh, beating a dead horse, now the, the and most important, and it's the two most important words in fly casting are stop and stop. Here's another reason why the word stop is just so prominent. The fly will go where your rod is pointing when it stops. Not when the whole process is over, but when it stops. So, again, if I stop and I'm aimed at V-Ball, it's gonna hit V-Ball, right? If I'm, if I'm aiming at Danny, it's because when my rod stopped, that's where I was pointing. Now, the reason, let me ex show it a little different, this is a cast you guys won't be worrying about right now, and maybe not at all, but something called a reach cast. I want you to see where my fly ends up on a line, but where my line ends up. So I'm, I'm still kind of thinking my, my target's in V-Bowl's direction. That fly is in an absolute direct line between V-Bowl and I. Look where my line is. Why did I, how could I do that? It's where my, my rod was when I stopped. Yep. Kind of the same thing, right? I'm, I'm pointing at V-Bowl, but I'm going to put a negative reach cast almost in a perfect straight line, but my line's way out here. And we'll talk more about why you would do this kind of cast. It's actually 
If you're fishing in a stream with moving water, this is actually a very common cast. But I like to show the reach because it emphasizes it's where the rod is pointing. And, and by the way, going back to one of the drawbacks of, of, you know, when you start getting in the habit of putting the arm out to the side and side casting, like I said, whether you mean to or not, you're gonna be, you're gonna be throwing curve casts or you're gonna be throwing negative curve casts. I don't know if you guys can see that, right? My line is arcing, we call that a negative curve. These other ones are positives. And the reason for that is, think about it, fellas, if, it's, if, it's, if the key thing is where my rod is pointing when I stop, if I'm pretty much perpendicular, if I stop at 10, which is a little early, but, or if I stop at nine, eight, seven, my, my, my fly is in that line, there's no, there's no doubt. Now, if I'm cantering off here, think of the difference of me stopping at 10, my fly is that side of Danny. If I stop at nine, I got V-bolt. If I stop, my gosh, if I stop at almost eight, I'm at Greg or even the other side of him. So think about this, right? Just that little difference in when I stop when I'm sidearm, my fly could land anywhere from your left, Danny, to Greg's right. So again, that's good reason why you wanna try and you know, get, get out of the habit of, of doing this, get in the habit of getting her largely perpendicular and stop. So on this one, Guys, you can you do what you're comfortable with. Whether you say, "Hey, I'd rather do just a pick up and deliver." If I want to do just a pick up and deliver, that's fine. If you want to say, "I want to pick up and do a couple false casts and deliver," that's fine. You do what you're comfortable with. But we're going to give you guys each a target, and I just want you to aim for it. And don't worry about the distance, by the way, guys. If your if your fly is short or long, could care less. But start thinking about just directionally. Where is my fly landing? So. Uh, Tell you what, we're gonna throw out a, a rod case. I'll put one for you guys to aim at, one for you guys. And again, just think, don't worry about depth. Don't worry about short or long. And I'm gonna purposely cheat it this way so your back cast is going that way a little more, Danny, because that tree is driving you nuts. And so, you know, guys, in your own mind, and you'll know, you'll know if you're being honest or cheating, but, you know, for each of you, you kind of pick an end or a spot mentally and just say, okay, stop. Am I pointing at that when I stop and where does the fly land? That's in line. That is in line, the reason that one, that's better. The reason that one didn't go good is, I mean, it was in the right line. It was just that we lost a bit on the back cast, but the line was good. Good line. And so V-Bolt, if you were to guess why we're not getting quite, that's better, the distance, what would you think was going on? Uh, you weren't stopping. That's a stop. And see how much better your line laid out? good, Danny. I'd still say slow her down. Slow her down. Rod's doing the work. How are we doing over here? From the side, it looked like you guys are doing fine. Yeah? I'm still doing better if I'm watching what's going on up here, and then it's like I try to cast and then bring it forward and still get it quite long. Oh no, I was going to say the same thing. If you didn't know that, you were fine. And you're fine too. And so, Vibo, with you, you're, you, you may be looking like you're the one that's struggling to hit the target the most. It's not that your line's bad. It's actually that it's just because we're losing a little power on the back that it's kind of piling up for your lines are good. And when it's piling up, On that, let me ask you, on that last cast, when you were back, where was your rod tip? Could you, were you looking at it? Could you see it? Could you see it? I wasn't paying attention. Okay, fair enough. Um, usually if people are really focusing on, <laughs> all right, we got broken tackle over here. That's a $600 rod, by the way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, if the reason I mentioned Feeble, and I'm not, you know, it, it's something for all you to be aware of. 
when we, when we just, and again, I, I know I'm beating a dead horse, but it's going to be so important to the stop. And it's not that you just, just that your arm stop, it's that you tangibly, I see my rod stop. And the reason I mentioned that is I think if I, v I was watching, you were looking back, but on that last cast, your rod tip was here. I can't see my rod tip. So that's probably one clue to you that the stop wasn't good. Now you're, by the way, I'm not seeing a lot of, I'm not seeing a lot of this. I think it's more for you, you bring the elbow in and just get that. I mean, like I said, guys, if, if you're familiar with music at all, be a metronome. But that's, that's what it is. And, and that's why I say, be looking behind you and make sure that before you come forward with your eyes, you saw that rod come to a dead stop. So, like I said, I wasn't, trying to, I wasn't trying to be a smart aleck, but I was wondering what you were going to say, because I have a hunch you couldn't have seen it. Yeah. Because then the last one, oh, and by the way, this may be what subconsciously you were, you were thinking of. Guys, it's, it's funny, and I do it even after all these years. Um, let me steal your rod, and I'll try, to, I'll try to be funny about it here, but we do, we do our pickup, we do a couple false casts, and we deliver. We all have a tendency to do this, I pick up, I got, a, I got a couple nice little false casts, but this one's my deliver. And that looked like I was getting silly on the front end, but guys, it's just like you know the baseball bat when you're really getting ready to cock it, right? You're gonna be doing something funny back here. I'll, I'll try to be, emphasize it again, but I've got, you know, I got pretty much my 10 and my two nice easy casts. Well, this is gonna be the real one. So be conscious of that, that most of the time that you guys may have a little struggle and maybe you said, but I stopped, I stopped, I stopped. On the back one, there's this mentality of, okay, this is the real deal, got to muscle it. You won't just muscle it on the front. You will tend to lay it out because I really got to get an arc with this rod. So call it, call it timeout. We're still live though. Um, Observations today, questions today. I like the false uh, casting. I like the false casting. Don't do too much of it, you'll get tired. <laughs> and you might get snagged in a tree. I feel like the false casting, just a couple, gives me a little bit better feel for when it's laid out it's just tough, before yeah. I yeah. deliver. Like I said, a lot of people, the false casting actually helps because, like you said, it starts to get you in a bit of more of a rhythm. And by the way, you know, I said keep it absolutely to a minimum. There's reasons you want to keep false casting to a minimum, but if you find that, hey, I'm comfortable, even on a pickup and deliver, to just put one or two false casts and deliver, if that, if that really gets you into rhythm and straightens out your cast, do it. Do it, right? I just, I just cringe when I see people that are just going. Other thought, I, I do agree. I think that that's very legit. Other observations, other questions, something that was going on today, you go, eh. 